guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Budgeteers Bite Size. We've got an interesting video for you today. We're going to be meeting up with a subscriber of the show and he lives a really interesting life. He, uh, he gets to travel and do little budgeteer adventures uh, around the world. He's one of you guys. He's a fan of the show. And he makes his money from basically his laptop. He's fully nomadic. He's a digital nomad. He's a really interesting guy. And I just think it would be really interesting in this bite size to deep dive into what he gets up to. Because normally we do big travel adventures and we show you how to have loads of fun on a cheap budget. But today we're going to deep dive into something a little bit more different and something I think you might find super interesting. So just driven over to his apartment, which is actually a two minute walk from my place, which is a bit lazy. And we'll go see him. We'll have a look at his apartment because it's so cheap. And then we'll just have a little bit of a chat about what he does and how he makes his money. Um, and he's had a lot of success on YouTube as well, which I think you guys are going to be really interested in. Basically, he's a really cool guy. Let's go meet him in his apartment and get to know a little bit more about Chris. And uh, yeah, let's roll the intro and I'll see you at Chris's apartment, which is just upstairs. Let's go. This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. To find out how to get two months free access to their wealth of online classes, make sure to stay tuned to the end of this video. Paddy, hey, how Chris, you doing, man? It's Chris the Freelancer. <laughs> Paddy from the Budgeteers. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for uh, agreeing to let us look under the covers a little bit. Yeah, that's all right. Um, I think the first thing is, because I know you're hungry, <laughs> um, I'm hungry as well. We'll go out and get some food. But when you told me, like, and you dropped the location, like, oh, I live here. I'm like, it's two minutes away from my house. Yeah. And uh, I just thought it would be interesting, if you don't mind, like, just to talk a little bit about where you're staying. Because I know this building, I know this street. Mm. It's not the hippening, happening area that most digital nomads are going to. Yeah. Like, why did you choose this particular, like, unit, basically? Um, I've always stayed in the Niman area. Yeah. Um, and like you said, this is not right on them on Heyman Road, but yeah. it's just off. Yeah. Um, but in terms of why I got this place specifically, I was looking in this area on Airbnb and my budget was around the thousand AUD a month. But um, I, I found this one and I was like, oh, it intrigues me because I don't think I've ever stayed at a place this cheap in uh, Chiang Mai <laughs> before, you know? And, yeah. I, and, I, and I usually don't book through Airbnb. I rock up and like, uh, you know, Look search around. on the ground, so I shouldn't be yeah. paying that. I wouldn't be paying that um, Airbnb premium, premium, right? Yeah. But um, this one, I was surprised to find it. Um, it was I paid two hundred and eighty-eight Australian dollars, which is about six thousand baht. We did the math; it was like a hundred and ninety US dollars yeah, per month for twenty-nine days. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I'm I'm pretty like simple guy like I don't need too much obviously if I was going to stay here longer than 29 days yeah yeah I'd want something a, a little, little bit nicer bigger. but also the idea about getting a place so cheap is it gave me a lot of freedom to say if I came here didn't like it you could leave it was cheap enough to just throw it away and move on to another place but I mean if the, you think if you think about this right yeah he's paying 6,000 baht, just like 20 baht over. So basically, just about 200 US dollars for a month for an air conditioned, fully furnished apartment with a private bathroom in a two minute walk or five minute walk from yeah. the center of where everything is. And um, like, I'm kind of thinking now, like, I could save so much money. Because <laughs> I have a night, I, okay, just to full disclosure, I live five minute walk from your place yeah. and I pay more than double than what you do. But I live mm. here full time all year round. Yeah. I need a bit more space. I've got loads more rubbish. You know, you're living out of a backpack at the moment. You're mm. fully nomadic right now, so you don't have loads of clutter. Like I have a wardrobe of stuff. Yeah, and I have yeah. like loads of memorabilia and, and like all this other stuff that you, normal people have when they live somewhere. I've been living here for three years, which is, all sounds like an excuse, but basically this is why I need a bigger, more expensive place. 
Yeah. But like when you come here, you can see like, oh, I can see what you're doing. You're just trying to reduce your costs because you're here to basically work and enjoy Chiang Mai mm. and not have a big comfortable pad where you're going to be on Instagram every minute. Like, oh my God, look at my infinity pool. Like, yeah. Look at me in the gym, in the building. You're just here for a different reason. right? Yeah. And honestly, I spend most of my time outside the room. So I'm not much of a homebody anyway. Yeah. Yesterday I was hanging out at a really nice co-working space that has a pool and yeah. like all those amenities. And you so just, like, you don't I'd have rather to, spend my money yeah, on that. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Right. Are you hungry? Should we go have a chat? Yes. It's lunchtime. Chris has had some amazing success, um, not just in his professional digital life and his nomadic lifestyle, but also on YouTube. So I'm really excited for uh, for me to talk to you about that and uh, let you guys know a little bit about sort of yeah how he makes his money and how he's doing this lifestyle, which is really interesting. So um, what do you fancy for lunch? Because I'm starving now. Uh, probably we're in Thailand, so we should probably eat Thai food, right? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, cow soy sound good? Yep, absolutely. Right. One of the other great things about Chiang Mai, apart from the incredibly cheap cost of living, is the amount of delicious food available on almost every single street. So we jumped on our scooters and we headed down a few side streets of the old town and we found a local spot that serves up really cheap food. These curries are only 40 baht each and a big beer is only 50. So a couple of dishes, a beer and a water only cost $5. And so we wolfed those down and then we delved into some of Chris's YouTube successes. But yeah, let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about YouTube now because this is something that I'm really interested in, Yeah, uh, obviously. In particular, let's deep dive into your channel and the video that you made. Mm. called Living on 600, yeah. right? I checked this morning, it's on 1.5 million views, mm. right? Which is crazy. Yeah. So basically like, what is the video about and, 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 and uh, like, why did you make it? Literally like it starts in the video, um, people were asking me a lot of questions about um, cost of living in Chiang Mai. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people have spoken on this topic before but it's always been like, sit on the edge of their bed and be like, yeah, like I spend this around this much on this, around this much on this. And I just thought to myself, like, how could I make mine much more engaging and a yeah. bit different and just do it in a Stand unique way? Stand out from the rest of the videos. Yeah, so I, tr I tried to, it's like part like TV show, yeah. like part story. And so instead of just like, waiting till the month to end and then like reporting on what I spent. I like filmed the whole month yeah. and like the video starts with, will I make the budget? Yeah, like know? a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think what's really great about the video is as I go through life, you can see the lifestyle and then you see the, the prices pop up on the screen. Yeah. Um, so it gives you a greater sense of like, oh, this is the lifestyle he's living and these are the yeah. things he's spending money on and how yeah. much that costs. And I've watched the video, like, you don't scrimp by, you're not staying in some cardboard mm. box eating, eating boiled rice, you know. Yeah. For $600, you had a really good place to stay. Yeah. You uh, ate out pretty much all the time, yeah. right? Every did, meal. Every meal you ate yeah. out. Did you, did you know when you were making it that it had the potential like, to go big or did it kind of just, mm. did, did it surprise you or did you think, oh, well, this, I knew this was gonna happen? Yeah, well, it was, I could see on YouTube it was a popular topic. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess probably I was expecting like, to do as well as the other videos, which may be around 30,000, 50,000 yeah. views. Um, I think it kind of cracked into the whole living in Thailand niche and just outside of that as well. People How did just it blow up then? Did it get like shared on a Facebook group or I don't like, know. I did, think... it, did it jump to a million views in a week or what did it, was it just, has it been steady growth all the time? Uh, well, there was this, there was this one day where it hit like, it just blew up. It was 70,000 views in a day. Right. And it just came skyrocketing down again. 70,000 in one day? Yeah. Okay. And so I was like, oh my God, it's going to hit a million views. But then it like, boom. Oh, and then God. it's just been steady ever since, which is not a bad thing. Like, yeah, so people are still finding your channel every day yeah. and seeing like a professional-ish, you know, it's not like gonna yeah. win an Oscar, but it's very well made. Like you've got yeah. camera angles, storylines, intro, you've got pop-ups, it's, yeah. it's like a documentary of an entire month. Your channel's on 70,000 now? Yeah, 70,000 subscribers. And you don't, you don't do it full-time at all, right? No, it's definitely no. a part-time thing and I think, um, yeah, even coming back to Chiang Mai this time, not much has changed. So Nothing like, changes. So like the video is still relevant. Still it's relevant, still yeah. a good indication of, because I put the prices up in baht. Yeah. Um, the exchange rate for me has changed, yeah. but the price in baht is yeah. the same, right? What are your main three or more, I don't know how many revenue yeah. streams you have, like mm. what, 
what are they? Like, yeah. you've got your freelance work. Yeah. What else do you do? Yeah, so the main thing I do is um, client work yeah. and web development. So and that's completely, you can, work, you can do those from anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the rest is all related to content creation. So YouTube, um, I'm also a top teacher on Skillshare.com. Yeah. Um, and those are basically the main ones. So two or three, that's it, right? You just yeah. got your, your freelance work. Mm content creation and like yeah yeah doing so, online courses yeah so there's some other small bit of money that comes through from like maybe products I recommend on my bro like blog like affiliate links and stuff like yeah that. affiliate marketing I I created some my own digital products I created some Kindle books as well I've experimented with wow. a lot of things yeah um, but yeah now it's a lot simpler it's mainly um, my client work um, my uh, royalty share from Skillshare.com yeah and um the YouTube ad revenue. There's some limitations, like I do try and work on the Australian time zone. Yeah. Um, but for me being Australian and like being in Southeast Asia, that's not too too hard. Yeah. You know? So you must have to wake up here like five o'clock in the morning or something. Yeah. So yeah. right now I like wake up at five a.m. in the morning um, and go to the office, which is the co-working space, yeah. which is open twenty four seven. And yeah, some people don't realize that you know you can there's offices around the world they're yeah. called co-working spaces and yeah. you can just sign up to them and do the same thing you would do yeah. in a regular and, office and the ones in home. Chiang Mai are so good aren't they yeah. they've got pools they've got good wi-fi yeah. they've got really like good facilities and they're everywhere and they're walking yeah. distance yeah from most places in the old city or in the Niman area yeah it's a very well set up uh, sort of city for internet and is there a better city set up for it really I don't think so like yeah Something that may, people may not realize is that Chiang Mai is largely considered the the best city in the world for, for working remotely. Why don't we just finish up here and I'll take you to this. There's a really nice park just down the road because it's like late afternoon on a Sunday. Yeah. And then we can tell you guys a little bit about sort of some information on and some advice from Chris. You don't have to deep dive into everything, don't worry. Yeah. Um, but just let, let, us, let us and our subscribers know like what do they have to do if they're sat mm. at home watching this going, all right, Chris did it, what do I have to yeah. do to be able to have a nomadic lifestyle? Because there's only a few simple steps, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll go to the park and talk about that, yeah? Awesome. Sweet. Cheers. <laughs> Where's, here we go. Cheers. <laughs> Are you not drinking then? Um, yeah, I mean, if, we're, if we can drink at the park. Turns out the beers would have to wait until later, so we just took a lovely little stroll around this gorgeous little park. We grabbed some fresh coconuts and picked a spot to talk about what Chris's recommendations are if you're thinking about getting into the digital nomad lifestyle. Cheers, Chris. Cheers, Patty. Mm-hmm. Mm. Nothing like a fresh coconut. We had to settle for a cold, um, a cold coconut because there's a thing about Thailand, which is they don't sell any beer <laughs> between, is it 11 and 2 and 2 and 5? No, when is it? 11 and 2 and 5 onwards is like when you can buy. So from, oh, that's right. Yeah. So from like about 2 to 5 p.m., you can't buy alcohol, which is, uh, we're we still trying to figure why. out. Yeah, we're still trying to figure out why that is. These guys watching this, uh, they're probably thinking like, oh, that looks really cool. Chris, what an interesting guy, makes money, and just travels around and... All he needs is his laptop. Like, hmm. what? What do they need to do? What do people need to do in order to change what they're doing right now? Working where they're working, doing what they're doing, and just become nomadic. Like, what are the what are the things that you recommend people do? Yeah, it's um, it's going to be different for everyone, right? Because, say, for instance, some of you watching might already be running an online business or. Um, yep. doing some sort of digital profession. So the transition for those people is going to be a lot easier than say somebody who's working in something that's very location dependent, like they're a nurse or um, a laborer, something right. like that. Like you can't really build a house remotely. No, right? you yeah. Know? Um, so yeah, their skill sets don't transfer to digital. Yeah, so yeah. unfortunately, or fortunately, um, the skill has to be something you can do like your profession has to be something you can do on a computer. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I was studying accounting and you can possibly do accounting yeah. um, remotely, 
but you've got to go through this lengthy process through university, um, work in the industry for a while, become certified, yeah. and then maybe you'll find a firm that allows you to work remotely. Yeah. Whereas something like web development, which I moved into, um, is probably the best career to work remotely with. Yeah, I mean, I before I you know, did YouTube and I've turned you know, our YouTube channel into something that makes a small amount of money, it's like, I built the skills in video making. Like I, I'm a teacher. I don't mm. teach online. I know you can teach online, but I don't. Yeah. I choose not to. Yeah. Uh, so if you are a nurse, if you are a builder, or you've got something that doesn't seem like you can go online, like you, you were an accountant, but yeah. here you are doing something completely out, something completely different. So yeah. how did you get to the point of like changing your career basically and becoming an expert in something that you didn't know anything about? Yeah. So I have this uh, four-step process, and this is basically something that I followed loosely when I went about changing careers and, and living this sort of lifestyle is number one, you gotta have the skills, right? Yeah. And then number two, you've gotta get paid for those skills. And then maybe it's not maybe it's not even like freelancing or running a service based business. Maybe it's you learn the skills to sell a physical product online. Mm -hmm. And then of course if you're gonna make an income you need to get paid. So that's a skill in itself. Like in learning how to market. monetize it. Yeah. Um, so if you if you if you are freelancing, then you need to learn how to get clients, right? Yeah. Um, if you're selling a product online through an online store, you need to know how to market that and yep. get customers to your store. Was that hard for you when you had the skill and you developed, you knew how to make a website, for example, yeah. and then trying to find your first client? Oh, absolutely, because. I don't know. I'm not sales. You're not a salesman. My, yeah, yeah, I'm not a salesman, right? So, for me, I like I. I did you do was, stuff for free for a while, or to yeah. build a portfolio? Yeah. So yeah. I think I do think that working for free or cheap or working on unpaid stuff at the beginning, yeah. in order to get a portfolio, um, is it, it's almost a necessity. Obviously, you need to choose a point where you're not you have the skills and you have the portfolio, and you're not going to want to do free work after that, you like yeah. have to know your value. But in the beginning, in trying to prove yourself to potential clients, mm -hmm. they're gonna wanna see that you've done it before for other people. So you've built your skills, you've got mm -hmm. a few clients, you're getting paid, what's next? Um, so the next two steps, um, for me, were pretty easy. So um, I include a third step in there, which is basically um, to free yourself, right? Some people have family commitments, they have financial commitments, relationships, they have yeah. relationships. Um, fear holds back a lot of people. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It can be mental, it can be something there in their environment. Luckily for me, I had no dependents. My girlfriend was on board. Yeah, she, she, she was also nomadic, right? Well, she, she was the same as me. She was in um, sales and transitioned into digital marketing. Right. Um, so we transitioned into the right career, build skills in that area, what you're saying um, is you have to sacrifice things in order to... Yeah, yeah. like... Like, get out of your lease or your contract, quit your job. Yeah, like, so we waited until our lease ended yeah. on our apartment because it's, it's going to be harder if you have financial commitments back home. Yeah. You know? Um, and then the fourth step is um, choose your destination and, and, and just do it. Going in, like, if you're scared of something, it's probably a good indication that if you pursued it, that that would be outside your comfort zone and therefore you would grow as a person and who knows what you're going to learn when you put yourself in a new environment, try new things um, and push yourself. I agree with you 1000% oh. and uh, I think that's kind of a little bit about like, what the budget is, is about, you know. Um, we try to break down what I think are the two main barriers mm. to entry when it comes to traveling which is, oh I don't have enough money and we try to say, hey, you don't need loads of money a little bit is going to be okay. There's adventures to be had. Uh, you just need to go look for them. And the second barrier is fear and anxiety. Like, I'm scared to go to this country. I'm scared to leave home. I'm, I, what if I don't like it? What's the food going to be like? So much fear and doubt goes into um, the unknown when it comes to travel. Mm. And um, But don't you think that's what makes it interesting, Patty? Like, yeah. going into... If it was like, oh, I'm just going to travel, like an hour outside of my hometown. Yeah, like, it's yeah. not going to be as adventurous as going somewhere where the culture is different and you're a little bit anxious about being there. But yeah, I just want to say thanks for, for agreeing to let us take a little look into your life here and what you're up to and stuff. And 
Um, yeah, anything for the budget here. Is a big Chris, fan of this channel. Chris, Chris is an OG <laughs> fan. Like, how did you find the channel? Back in series found, one. I found your channel um, back when I started my channel. So like four years ago. Um, series one, yeah. Wow. I remember watching you guys uh, come out and camp on the beach in uh, next to Kuda. Bali, next to Bali Airport. And I was yeah. like, wow, these guys are doing it differently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is interesting. Yeah, and here yeah. we are now, like four years later. We're mm. about to go shoot series five. We just took, we haven't figured out where we're going yet, but yeah. we're looking at maybe Europe. Um, the bike trip, the new series is coming out next week. Mm -hmm. um, it's been it's been out for a while with our, our members, and um, even I sent it to Chris. You've seen it. What did you think of the bike trip? It's it's very different. It's something special for YouTube. Yeah. So um, I'm excited. It's for a bit out there, right? It. No spoilers. Yeah. Um, we've made the, we've made this new series, and uh, it documents eleven strangers driving around the mountains of northern Thailand. And I'm really excited for everyone to see it next week. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you want to become a nomad. If you want to go digital and uh, get out there and see the world whilst you can make money, I hope today we've shown you that Chris has been able to do that on a budget and continues to make passive and active income uh, whilst he's traveling and seeing the world and drinking cold c coconuts and <laughs> talking rubbish on a beautiful park. So yeah. there are so many reasons to get out there and uh, see the world and uh, try new things out. Like if you're feeling frustrated at home and you don't know what to do, and you're just looking for inspiration here on YouTube and you've watched this video, you know, leave a comment, we'll respond, I'll respond for sure and uh, try and guide you. So, Chris, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah, it's an and, honor. Uh, the Bike Trip, new series, it's coming soon. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for watching this episode of Budgeteers Bite Size. I will link Chris the Freelancer's YouTube channel below so you can check out his journey in more depth as well as some of his classes on today's sponsor, Skillshare. You guys know we work with Skillshare a lot. We love them. You can level up your skills, which is very important if you want to be a digital nomad, as you've seen today. You can level up your skills in video making and camera settings. Like, that's what I'm interested in. But maybe you're interested in doing what Chris does. He's got classes on web development. And there are thousands of other classes on all types of um, subjects that you can start leveling up today. So hit that link below and start your trial right now. Yes, that's right. Your two-month free trial is just one click away. But please note that this is just for the first 500 of our subscribers who click the link in the description. So scroll down right now and get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thanks again for watching and thanks for Skillshare for sponsoring this episode of Bite Size. And we will see you very soon for the general release of The Bike Trip.